Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, we're automating yarn equipment. Brought to you by Patreon. The problem with having a YouTube channel where you teach people how to automate things is that they don't want to automate things themselves. So they ask you to do it. These two have been given to me by my partner's mother and she asked me to automate them. And I thought about it for a while and I considered saying no, but you know, she's my future mother-in-law so I should probably be in her good books. Now, automated versions of these do already exist. Uh, this one's pretty easy to find, but they are kind of expensive. We'll go for a cost breakdown later. This one, I couldn't actually find. I might just be looking at the wrong keywords, but I couldn't find a motorized version of this. We'll start with how I automated this one first. I started off by modeling the main part of this infusion so that I can then design components to perfectly fit around it. If there's one thing that these projects taught me is how instinctual automating things is after a while. Like I knew from the start that I wanted to use gears to transfer the motion from the motor. And for a while I considered keeping the original part that makes this move up and down and just sort of jerry-rigging a motor mount on it, but it was just easier to print the whole thing. By the way, I'm super proud of this for no reason at all, and I'm gonna preach a little. When I was designing and printing these threads, printing threads always sounds great in theory. It never works in practice. There is always over extruded plastic that won't let you put stuff in the way you want to. You know what the solution is? Get yourself a tapping set. I have gone through way too much of my life without a tapping set. It makes things so much easier. Yes, I realize I'm way over excited for a tapping set, but they have changed the way I'm going to design things probably forever. My first iteration of these gears were just like regular gear models, uh, but that ended up having a problem I didn't predict. Uh, when you spun this up to speed, uh, this top bit ended up shooting away from this one and just ended up spinning by itself. Uh, I could market it as a safety feature, but instead I changed the design to helical gears, which doesn't let it lift off in the same way. So now I can just crank this up to full speed with no worry. This is, this is a 300 RPM motor. I was planning to use 1000 RPM. That would have been a mistake. By the way, it can go backwards and forwards. I feel like I didn't mention that. And that's pretty much it for this design. Yes, we'll get to the electronics. Calm your hype. Uh, to finish it off, I had to cut off the, uh, the top bit to like slide this thing down. Uh, so I just replaced it with a, with a thing that has my, uh, my branding on it. I think it's cute. The electronics for this are ridiculously simple. These are all off the shelf components. Like the only thing you have to do is just wire them together. By the way, don't get confused. The electronics for both of these are exactly the same. So we start off with a 12 volt power supply going into our barrel jack connector, which is wired into our speed controller, which is then wired into the most complicated part of this entire circuit, the switch. It's called a six pin on on switch. And all it does is it lets you uh, change the direction the motor is going. Uh, the wiring for it is simple, but I need the watch time. So you connect the plus on this side and then on the other side, you connect the plus on this side and the opposite with the, uh, with the ground. And then the motor goes in the middle and then depending what position the switch is in, it either connects the, uh, the motor to this lot or to this lot, which changes the direction of the motor. And then the motor spins. And that's it. Moving on to this one. Originally, this one had a, a winder thing on the side, uh, a bit like old car windows. To automate this one, I started off by uh, modeling the whole thing in Fusion. Yes, I probably went a little over the top. And then I simply removed the handle and modeled the end bit of it to be sort of an adapter for the motor shaft and for the gear that's in here. I did have to deal with a couple problems. For one, the, uh, the motor shaft would, uh, would spin inside the, uh, the converter I made. Uh, the, the way I fixed that was by uh, drilling a hole through the shaft and the plastic, uh, tapping it with the uh, tap I mentioned earlier and putting a grip screw all the way through and that solved all of my problems. Yes, it feels a little bit overkill and yes, it worked for a while without it, but the more pressure you put on here, the, uh, the more the, the motor just started slipping. So it was easier to just go all the way through 
than to like try to fix it any other way. There's not a lot to say about the box I designed to hold the electronics in. If anything, it's very stupid. For example, if I want to replace the motor for whatever reason, I have to remove this cover and then I have to remove all of the electronics. I then have to unscrew this box from the, uh, the metal inner piece, which then lets me unscrew the motor. It's a little impractical, but it works just fine. So let's see these two in action. I'm gonna start by unwinding this onto this and then winding it back. This needs to be up a little higher on the same level as this, so uh, I'm gonna rest it on a future project. By the way, if you want behind the scenes and early access to projects, follow me on Patreon. You'll find out what I'll be doing with this. I like to do this. This is fun. I'm still learning the way of the yarn. Okay. Okay. So, whilst this is going on, let's go over the cost breakdown. Welcome to Mellow Labs presents DIY or Buy. Let's start with the wooden thing. Original price, £31. Let's add the DIY modifiers. Motor, £12. Uh, connector, £1.40. Uh, speed controller, £2.60. And other things like 3D printing, screws, whatever, uh, about £2. So that brings us to £49 for an automated version of this. How much do we save by not buying it? I don't know, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find this one. If you, if you know, put it down in the comments, but I couldn't find this one. Moving on to the ball winder. Original price, £19. Let's modify. £12, £1.40, £2.60, £2, £37. How much do we save by DIYing it and not buying it? Uh, a lot, because like the cheapest one I found was 60 and the more expensive ones were like upwards of like 300. So what did we learn today? Make it yourself, it's cheaper. And you'll actually know how to fix it. And now we go the other way. My partner always complains that this took her ages when she was young. It doesn't seem so hard to me. It's kind of mesmerizing. And with that, thanks for checking out today's video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you have some spare change, support me on Patreon. Till next week, goodbye. It did come with a couple problems, like the shaft with the adapter on, oh wait. This is not a thing that should be in this video, <laughs> out of all the videos.